Hello everyone, today we're gonna be creating this weird looking creature that walks by itself when you move it. So this is day 3 of the Geometry Node series and let's get into it. I've created the setup before as well when I saw the breakdown by Cartesian Caramel and yeah let's get started. So let's get a cube here and uh, create a new Geometry Node setup. I'm gonna delete the default input and just add in a grid here grid and put that to the output so now we can edit this grid however we like scale it up and give it some subdivisions as well so well, let's study the concept first and then we're gonna get into creating that so what do we have here? First of all we have the canvas where we distribute some points and on these points we're gonna distribute some curves like that and then we're gonna have an, uh, a location or an empty and we're gonna tell Blender that uh, select all of the top vertices of these curves and position them all to the location of the empty right here so all of them are gonna be like this and then we just delete the far ones and leave the ones that are near the empty right there and when we move the empty we have this trim curve going on so then it looks like the legs are moving but it's just trimming the legs uh, which are near Okay, let's uh, distribute points on faces. There we got some points and I'm gonna choose Poisson disk and bring up the distance minimum. Instance on points. Just have to instance some points on there. We have studied this before so I'm not gonna explain this again. let's get a simple curve path and I'm gonna rotate this along the y-axis by 90 degrees put that to the side right here and bring it up just like that so we just need three points here we're gonna delete the this one and this one control X and if you move that you can see it's still looking like that now we're gonna import this into geometry nodes and connect this geometry to the instance. And select the nerve spot here and control A. Apply the rotation. So they're facing upwards. And then we're also gonna set the origin to this point. So shift S cursor to selected, hit tab and set origin to 3D cursor. Once we realize our instances, then we can control all of them individually. So let's just set the position. And in the selection, we just want the end point of this curve. We don't want uh, this point or this one. We just want the end point. So end point selection. Get that. And if I can see. If I move this along the y-axis, we just are we're just selecting the top vertice of this curve on all of these. So that's great. Uh, we're gonna put that there, and let's just try to get the position of an empty. Let's just add an empty here. Anything works. I'm gonna put that here and import this to the geometry nodes as well. This should be relative and we're gonna get the location and get points here. This is just a vertice we added here and the position of this vertex is gonna be 
uh, the location of our empty. So whenever I move the empty, this vertex is going to move with it. You can see it's there now. And now we can just get the position of this vertex as the position for the top points of this curve. Let's get a proximity node and make this from faces to points and connect the position right there to the position. Now when I move this, you can see all of the top vertices of this curves are connected to the empty. So uh, after this, what do we need to do? We might need to do one more thing here. Let's just align these instances to the normals. So when we add something like a sphere or a terrain here, they are not just gonna face upwards, they're gonna face along the normals. So the legs are not gonna look weird. So let's get align Euler to vector. And this should be, this should be our vector, the normal. And connect that to the rotation. And set that to z-axis. That's great. So now if we had something else here, like uh, if we join geometry and we get a icosphere, preview that. So let me just scale that up real quick and transform it to the side. There we go. It's like that. Now you can see we have vertices uh, coming from all over there as well. But they're not just facing upwards, they're facing towards the normals of the sphere and the plane and all that. And if I remove that, you can see all of them are kind of facing upwards, which is not so good. You can see this is picking up the edges from all over the geometry, which we don't want. We just want the nearby vertices over there. So let's just trim them. We're going to get trim curves. Trim curve and just get this proximity distance and connect it to the start or the end. I don't know. Let's yeah, the ending. Just get the distance and get a color ramp. Connect that to the ending. And once we control this like that, it's not working right. Let's get a math node here. And we're gonna bring this down like that. Let's just bring down the Why is it, when I move it away, it's working? So we're gonna have to get a map range and flip that as well. Get a map range. And you can preview that from here. Like, from over here, I think. So this area needs to be white. This one, and these, all of that needs to be black. So. We're gonna flip these two last values. Let's make that one and make this one zero. So that's flipped now. And we can just set up the whole effect here. Like that. You can see this kinda looks like a spider. Let's just get a copy of our mesh as well. So let's just, let's just get this mesh and get a joint geometry and connect that to the join geometry right here and preview it. So let's just get that, save your file and once you move that, you can see how this looks like. This looks great, but we're gonna, uh, we're gonna customize that a lot more. Let's get a color ramp.
I'm gonna set the color ramp to ease and once I move this now it's kind of fast I don't like that let's bring that back see how this one looks like that's great you can customize all the handles and all that let's just mesh this these curves and we're gonna be done with it so that's great let's just um, curve to mesh I'll just type CTM and curve to mesh will appear okay we need to put it here because we don't want to put it on our geometry that we joined here and just get a circle curve circle should be our profile curve let's bring that down to 8 and bring down the radius and at the end points we can add some instances as well so let's get the trim curve and instance on points once we do that we're gonna join that with our curve to mesh and after that just get an IK sphere bring down the radius and give it some subdivisions at the end we just have to use a set shade smooth to smoothen things out still looks good I think this looks kind of like a creature which I saw somewhere in the movies or something this looks like something but we don't want that let's just get the endpoint selection for this and it's only gonna select the endpoints of the geometry look at that so yeah you can just hit G to grade that and uh, grab that and create all sorts of interesting creatures from this and you can shade them individually all of these parts like the spheres or the body and you can add objects right here and parent it uh, that's basically it you can bring the bring up the radius here and if you don't want the starting instance for the curve you can just remove that and that should be it Now it'll work with any kind of surface. If you don't like this grid that I created, you can just create your own geometry or terrain and uh, put this, put your geometry right here to this point and remove this one. You, you don't have to add like procedural geometry. Yeah, and let's clean this up. So yeah, that was it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something. I'll see you in the next one which will probably come up like next month. I don't know.